So I'm going to return to data now just to make some changes. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of sections for now and explore some of those other options we were talking about earlier. So before we move on, I'm just going to revisit the crosstab idea that I talked about. Now, if I drag in a category field, so a yellow field, into this rows, we'll actually see that I now get rows based on demographic, columns based on year, and the middle of the table is based on this invoiced amount. So this is what we call a crosstab, where we have column and row headers. Now we could move these around and just put it back as a column. Alternatively, we could move everything and make them a row. And it just changes the layout of the table. Now something I didn't mention is the different colored icons we have over here. The first color we have here is the yellow icon. And you'll become familiar with this if you progress on to the view building uh, section of the training material. But basically the yellow icon is called a dimension field. And what that means to us is it's used to split up our numeric fields. So it's a category. Uh, generally speaking, it's a text field or sometimes it's a date or a number field. So the only times it's a number field is when the number is used uh, not to measure things, but as a label itself. So an example of that would be athlete ID that we have up here. If I dragged that in, you'll see that this is actually a label. So it's like a membership number, for example. Uh, so we've made that a dimension so that Yellowfin understands this isn't something that we want summed up. So if I tried to aggregate this field, I actually only get the count and count distinct options. And that's because Yellowfin knows that we've made it a dimension, which means it wouldn't make sense to like average the field or sum the field up. It would only make sense to count how many athletes we have. So that's why we get those options. The second type of field we have is this blue icon, which lets us know the field is what we call a metric. Uh, alternatively, it's uh, something that's used to measure something. So whether it's measuring dollars, measuring units, and so on. Now, the blue icon allows us to aggregate as we saw before. It allows us to do all of the standard aggregations, as well as doing things like performing mathematical calculations such as uh, division, and multiplication, things like that. But I digress. So now we have our fields in our report. The next thing we're going to have a look at are calculated fields. So to add a calculation, we just click on the plus at the bottom here. And now we get our calculated field builder. So what I might want to do is build a really simple calculation that's invoiced amount, including tax. So my formula for this might be something like my invoice amount multiplied or add 10%. So to do that, what I'm going to do is drag in my invoice amount. So I use these little buttons and menus at the bottom to build my formula. So I'm going to find invoice amount. And as soon as I select it, it adds to my formula. Then I'm going to multiply it by 1.1. And I'm going to add what's in this cell in. And now I have my formula. Now, Yellowfin won't allow you to type directly into this box here. And that's because as we add each component using the buttons, Yellowfin knows exactly how to write the calculation behind the scenes. So it knows what SQL to use. If we typed directly in, it wouldn't necessarily be able to interpret what we've typed. 
So this is the way you need to build your formula. So once we build that formula, we click Validate. Yellowfin will check it and we click Save. Now you'll see here that I have this calculated fields folder and if I open that, I can drag my invoice amount, including tax, into my report. Now because we created this field in the report and not in the view, our administrator didn't define an aggregation for it. So we're going to have to do that. So we're just going to go to aggregation and sum. Okay, so you'll see it's the same amount plus the 10% tax. Now from here we can do some basic formatting, but we're actually going to come back to that uh, a little later on. So the next thing we're going to look at is using advanced functions. So to do that, I'm just going to change my report around a little bit. Okay, so imagine I've got this list of camp locations. So this might be shop locations or uh, site offices and things like that, depending on what your business is. And this is quite a long list. And it would be useful to me to only see the top 10 or bottom 10 performing locations uh, instead of having to search through the list alphabetically. So an advanced function can actually handle that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add an advanced function based on our sales figure, so our invoice amount. In order to do that, we need to add a second copy of the field. And the reason we do this, I'll just drag this in, is so that we can have one copy of the field that still shows the dollar amount and another copy of the field that shows our rank or in our, our advanced function result. So on this field, I'm going to go to advanced function and I'm going to explore the functions available to me. There are heaps available, so do have a look through them. Um, but we're going to use top 10 today. And we'll save that. And you'll see the icon is now green and my value has changed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fix up this report a little bit and we're going to do some basic formatting. So I'm just going to click on the arrow on my field, go to Format and Edit. Alternatively, I could have just come straight up here and selected my field. It's the same process. So what I'm going to do is rename my field. So I'm going to call it Top Invoiced Dollars. And then I'm going to remove the dollar sign because that didn't make sense. So I save that. And there are heaps of formatting options available. Um, we'll explore some of those later. So the next thing I'm going to do is move my field. So I just have to drag my field now and I can move it. And that also affects the sorting of my report. Alternatively, I can sort it manually if I want to. Okay. So that's how the advanced functions work. Now this, there are a lot of functions available, so do look through those. All right, so we've had a look at how to enable drilling. So the next thing we're going to do is return back to, uh, actually what we'll do is we'll add filters first and then we'll return back and explore some of the formatting options available to us. So the last thing we'll look at is how to filter. So a really common thing that you might want to filter by, generally speaking, is date. So it's pretty universal in the reporting world. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is find my date field. I'm going to drag it into my filter area and that's going to become a filter. <clears throat> so from here, I can define my settings. Now, in this scenario, there's a, there's a lot of different ways I can define my filter. So what we're going to do is just leave that for now and we're not going to worry about it and 
one of the next sections comes up uh, and explores individual types of filters. So we'll just look at those a little bit more closely in a moment. So for now, what I'm going to do is close my report. And it's asking me, do I want to activate this? And I'm going to say no, because I know it's not finished. So what that will do is we'll leave my report in draft mode, which we talked about earlier. <clears throat> and it'll just mean that consumers can't see my report until it's ready. So we're just going to access this storyboard. And we're going to go back 